Hi, okay. Um, now, I, I'm really getting into this. This is my third video on the same subject. Um, I just finished watching Alien Worlds and Extraterrestrial Life, Where Are They?, with, uh, by Brad Gibson. And he mentioned that there are lots of these videos on TED Talks, and so um, I'm gonna, now I'm going to start going through all of them. Um, I'm just going to, I already added my, my initial uh, two videos where I, I simply make the point of the, the missing factor uh, in the, um, oh Jesus, okay I forgot the, <sighs> conclusive, Wait, I just I need to I need to use the same names. In the equation of probability, in the equation of probability of, of life beyond our world, and again I'm surprised by um, by scientists. I don't know if this gentleman is a scientist. Um, I missed that part. He probably is some kind of scientist, or at least he has a scientific mind, but. I am always, I'm, I'm really surprised, I'm going to see how the, the, the other videos, um, what the other videos are like that he makes reference to, uh, that the, the, the point that I make, the aspect that I'm talking about, the speed and the vast, the, the immense amount of um, civilization increase or intelligent evolution of the species occurring at a given point at least we know it towards the end of everything we know so far but it may be our adolescent phase for all we know we may be entering adolescence as a species and from now we're just going to become something amazing uh, if we don't destroy ourselves seems to be the question right now but when you look at that factor of acceleration uh, and uh, increasing of size, as I referred to in the other video, size referring to our influence, looked at at a distance with objectivity, how from a little part of the world we're now as big or we extend to influence the outer solar system with our vehicles. Pretty soon we're going to have perhaps more vehicles and uh, people going to visit moons and stuff. Um, so this defining our size and the capacity, biological, scientific, engineering capacity, uh, scientific capacity of um, of the species, so exponentially accelerating, and meant in, into an immense uh, leap, a sort of warp speed of development towards these last few hours of what has been a year-long uh, evolutionary uh, um, uh, course for the species as a factor um, is completely ignored. It, su it surprises me that they, that they don't factor this into the, the probability, to the, into the equation of probability of human life and what that uh, I mean uh, extra uh, life beyond our world and what and how that speaks of the level uh, of their capacities of what they may be able it transcends anything any of our speculations uh, this gentleman for example is speaking of how the 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 lashing of our galactic arms when they cross each other in this in the spiraling of the of the galaxy creates forces that um, you know at, um, upset the balance that we become accustomed to it seems that we become accustomed to to see this to the at the scale this is the thing the scale of comprehension which is referring to the size of intelligence and influence would be so different to other life intelligence in the universe that things like what he is talking about would not only they weren't be new theories they would be stuff that they know is happens in the universe 
they have known for centuries and so for example um and so it all has to do you know they're at a level of of of, of moving in the in in cosmos or or however it is that their techno the technologies have have uh, are able to perhaps in fact the distances are uh always are indeed even even considering how much more advanced other intelligent forms are still the distance is unable to be bri uh, bridged still their technologies may have ways of extending themselves of procreating or of traveling or of making themselves present influencing changing tinkering transporting doing things in other places just like today we could p potentially uh, project a shadow across the ocean you know with a little bit more advancement in certain technologies we could create we could uh, display sound another to other parts of the uh, of the planet we could uh, transport our influences through we could have something materialize uh, you know get waves uh, some kind of waves uh, magnetic or microwave or what have you radio or x-rays or whatever kind of uh, um, uh, bands of energy a, a reach somewhere else we could have a, we could only take care of installing a receptor perhaps all they need to do is get something across the universe which may take 10,000 years which and, and then once that is done all of a sudden they can quickly uh, do stuff across other parts of the universe we don't know I mean the, actually the the um, the scope of imagination is so uh, has become so realistic now uh, with uh, where humanity has uh, arrived in its technologies and sciences that it's not uh, impossible to imagine breaching the unsurmountable or unbridgeable distances and still be able to uh, project ourselves to other parts of the universe or them project themselves and therefore create earth or have the earth be a result of the will the intention and the plan of other intelligent beings already um, which is what what I say in the other two videos so anyways uh, you know this is just adding to the same point but I guess now I'm going to be responding what I'm going to do is I'm going to respond to with a third video for each video at and Ted that I see so like this one made me say this and I will add it to the two basic ones the two first ones and then add this as a third one and then for another one that I see I will make a third one or fourth one and I don't know why I'm getting upset now all of a sudden I, I'm not I'm not all happy and and positive like I was in the first two videos because I guess that there's a part of me that is uh, I don't know what to how to describe it be uh, a little bewildered a little confused a little angry a little disappointed that um, that scientists, such intelligent, brilliant people, would not uh, make the point that um, it stands to reason, um, you know, that <laughs> that other life beyond our world has been uh, existing in the universe a billion times older longer than we have which means uh, we are either their intention their creation their um, effect their we are there or they're simply looking at us and have been looking at us for uh, hundreds and thousands of years and are completely uninterested in, in us you know um, but it's on the other side it's, it is not about us discovering whether uh, they are there or they are not there because that perspective and thinking would mean that they are unaware of us. <laughs> so you can't you can't have them both, uh, or you know, 
if we believe we're still discovering whether they exist or not, it must mean that it, it entails that we believe we have not been discovered. I mean, what we say is they have visited us, which still puts the sort of the power of influence and will on our side, not on their side. <laughs> it still makes it like they are, uh, they have to make an effort to come over here where we are the protagonists and we ask ourselves if uh, other life like us may exist. It's actually the other way around. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's on the other side. We are the ones that would, would be trying to figure out what the question mark of their real existence wants from us, has done with us, thinks about us, um, sees us, in what manner do they see us, uh, what we mean to them, it's on the other side, it's not about us, anyways, I don't like, you know, it's, it's interesting because I'm struggling to say this, I'm struggling to find the, the, the language and the grammar to, to get a simple point across, which is kind of interesting in itself, I don't know why that is happening why I can't seem to get make it simple make the point simple okay let's see what else there is out there in TED talks